Jalen Milrow is with us now. Uh, we are going to talk to the Alabama quarterback. He joins us from over in Tuscaloosa. Oh, he's got on that Crane Works Rental Works hat. Look at that, <laughs> Look at that hat, JM. Jalen Milrow with us. He is on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Welcome in, my man. How are you today? I'm good. How y'all doing? Man, we're doing awesome. Thanks a lot. Quite Give him that mother trucking hat. <laughs> <laughs> He got that done he away. Did, he did. He's presented <laughs> by Crane Works, Riddle Works, and Waste Works. Uh, uh, before we get into the important things, okay. can we ask you, as we were talking about movies, did you guys go to a movie the night before the Iron Bowl? No, nah, we did. Uh-uh. No, we, we didn't go to a movie the, the night before. Okay, you typically do, though, right? No, nah, only only okay. night game we, we go watch a movie before. Okay. Yeah, not this game. Mm-mm. Well, some would say you made a movie. Uh, someone say you made a movie there at the Iron Bowl. Um, I, the the amount of people on your team that said it, it was fourth and thirty one, we did not blink. We knew we were still going to win the game. Some would say that's lip service, but it is really the message your coach has driven into you ever since you've been in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing with everything is like the surrender the outcome. Um, no matter what a circumstance you are in the game, it's all about. Uh, surrendering the outcome and then have singular focus. And then I was, like, very important, you know, in the game, you know, because, um, you know, through a through a football game, it's good, it's bad, you know. And the biggest thing you can only focus on is, you know, be where your feet are. So I think that was the biggest thing um, throughout the game. Okay, before we get to the money shot, let's, let's go back to second and third down and the disasters those two downs were. Just take us through second and third down leading up to fourth and 31. Okay. So, you know, we're in, we're in positive downs. You know, we're close to the end zone. So, um, as an offense, you know, we have nothing but confidence, you know. Uh, we're right there. And, uh, you know, all it took to get to that, you know, down down close to the end zone. But, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, we had, you know, two two plays we definitely won back as a football team. But, you know, it was all about responding. And we looked at the, at the clock. We had enough time. That was, that was the biggest thing. We had enough time to regroup and – uh exactly you know do exactly what we needed to do um and uh you know only thing we can do is learn from the two two plays before the fourth down one uh you know we were able to go to the sideline regroup you know talk about the game plan um and then you know refocus and figure out what we needed to do to get back on the field and so when fourth down came it just all came back it all felt like practice to be honest like it was just like all right this is something we do and this is time to execute the play. And so, um, you know, Coach Reese called and I had nothing but confidence. Were you surprised you had that much time to to look and then throw the football? Uh, I I wasn't like necessarily surprised. I was just like I was more like like smiling because I knew we were gonna score. Like I knew we were gonna score. Like I, like everybody was like kind of nervous. Like I was straight. Like I knew exactly what was gonna take place, and they gave us the exact look I thought we were gonna get. Uh, we were asked this in the chat room, and I've actually noticed it in rewatching the play, that as you break the huddle before 4th and 31, offensive line coach Eric Wolford is walking with you on the field, has you by the shoulder pad whispering in your ear. What was he telling you? I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. Like I was so locked in to like what I had to do. Like, <laughs> don't worry about what he's saying. <laughs> What if he had told yeah. you, hey, watch, uh, we think Isaiah Bond's going to be able to the back quarter. Let's just look yeah. there. You know, like, I, I got a bunch of things go through my mind, and so it was just – you know, whatever coach report it was, it was probably good because it was sports. <laughs> yeah, but, but you, you know how he, you know how he's going to tell the story twenty years from yeah. now. It's going to like it watch right here. Yeah. I'm telling Jalen what's going to happen right. right here, and he he absorbs my knowledge yeah. and goes out there and makes it happen. Exactly. They're going to rush exactly. to look for seventeen to the back of the end zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were you were you surprised at what you saw defensively from Auburn, where they rush to and they've got a spy on you? I was more, you know surprised about the rush than I was like the defense because like if you think about it like before halftime they tried to throw a jump ball before half and then it was just like the same type of scenario try to you know push to the end zone but you know our structure was kind of different than theirs and so we ended up getting a pick before half um but it was more about like all right I saw I had time um in the pocket so I was like okay I'm gonna take my time let the play develop and then um take what they gave Jalen Milrow is with us, presented by Crane Works, Rental Works, and Waste Works. You see him wearing the hat. He is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Uh, the big guy says, rent from the big dog, Crane Works, Rental Works, and Waste Works. 
Uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but Jalen Hurts, the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, was asked in his news conference yesterday um, how close attention he paid to the Iron Bowl and how much he's paying to the Georgia game. And he brought you up specifically and uh, how proud he is of the way you have played this year. Do you talk to him often? How well do you know Jalen Hurts? I know I know Jalen Hurts. You know, that's I consider him a big brother. Um, I think we have a great, great relationship. And to hear, you know, things from him, you know, is nothing but – motivation nothing but you know uh, a sign of love and uh, you know i appreciate appreciate him a lot because um that's that's a quarterback i like very much in the nfl and we know how the naysayers uh can motivate you and he faced the same thing didn't he i mean there were a lot of people that think and i'll admit i was one of them when i first saw him did not think he could be the nfl quarterback he is today 100 percent, 100 percent. and then the biggest model he has keep the main thing the main thing and uh you know that's something you know uh that's that motivates us and something that, you know, gets us to exactly where we want to go in our future. Hey, before we talk SEC championship with you, um, one of our viewers, Michael, came to the team hotel uh, on Friday night before the Iron Bowl and had you signed a next round hat and got pictures with you and uh, our other NIL uh, guys, Booker and uh, Arnold. Um, and the wardrobe you guys have, I mean, my <laughs> goodness, back when I started covering, uh, college football, it was sweatpants and sweatshirts all the time. I mean, how much thought do you go into, to your, your, your fashion sense on a game weekend? I mean, do you, do you plan it out in the preseason as the season goes on? Do you know what you're wearing in Atlanta this weekend? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, you know, you look good, you feel good, play good, all that, all that correlates. So I think what you have have on is, you know, something that, you know, I, I take a lot of pride, a lot of pride in, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think the funny thing about it is everybody like to compete to see who has the best outfit on. And so guys on the team might throw on something, say, oh, yeah, I got it on this week. But, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. But uh, with everything, I try to, like, switch it up every single week, um, try to change up my wardrobe. And uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to wear this week. Hey, final thing for me on fourth and thirty-one. And by the way, I don't know if you're being—if you know this—you're being immortalized by the great Daniel Lay Moore. They are doing a portrait fourth and thirty-one based on that one play. So Alabama fans are going to love you. They're going to have you immortalized forever. But going into that play, I was like, oh, they're probably going to go to Nye Black or 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 Benson, one of the taller guys. Did you know you were going to Isaiah the entire time? Uh, so it's hard to say because like. When you let the like the play develop, you like see different things at quarterback and you know looking into the end zone, and so you know uh, looking looking at the play, I was letting it develop, and then as the play developed, I, I uh, soon got off of it and then went to a one on one. So I be um, was one on one, so I try to give him a shot. Burton's waving in the end zone. I mean, Burton's like, man, I'm open, yeah. I'm open. Yeah. I'm open. Did he tell you? I know you. I know we score, man, but I he, was open too. He did cut right when you were about to yeah, throw. He yeah. did cut right in the front yeah, of the end zone. Throw it at you. I know it's it's like after you throw the ball, it's like, oh, I could have hit this guy. Oh, I could have hit this. You know, it's a different thing after you throw the ball. It's like, ah, I had him. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> that was my reaction. And right as you were letting go, I was like, damn it. Burton's open right there. Yeah. Come on, Jay. Well, you know what? You had time. So yeah, that's right. if you decided not to go to Isaiah, you would have time to check down to Burton again. So, uh, Hey, so, uh, so you're getting ready for the Georgia Bulldogs. I know you've been breaking down tape because you work so hard on that all the time. Uh, the history between Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, they've influenced each other. How much looking at their defense, their schemes and everything is like looking at your defense and your schemes? Is there a lot that is alike between the two styles of defenses? Yeah, you know, there's similar in, in type of defense they run. Of course, you know, different coaches add different uh, different things to um, how they coach and, you know, add to defenses. But, you know, Coach, coach uh, Smart came from Alabama, so, you know, Coach – Coach Saban and him, you know, worked together, and uh, you know, they, they he definitely brought some things from uh, Alabama over to Georgia. Um, but the biggest thing is the structure of defense and how physical they play. Play very physical to play as a team. Um, and so, as far as game planning, you know, the biggest thing we had to do is just um, focus in and then really just understand the game plan. But at the end of the day, you know, we had reps against this type of defense, and so I feel like though we're prepared. You've obviously had to uh, – you've been on a team that had to deal with what you're dealing with right now, an emotional Iron Bowl lending and a quick turnaround to play this exact game. Um, so what do you draw from your experience in that? 
Yeah. So, um, like, like before, like I, the biggest thing for me is so I saw football in different lenses um, as I've been in college. You know, um, having a great leader in Bryce Young, and then the different guys on offense that were leaders um, for us. And the biggest thing they did well was have singular focus and just do their job. Um, and then honestly, just be where their feet are. I think that was something that separated um, our team that year with just how well we just focus in. And, uh, you know, to talk about this year, um, the biggest thing we just had to do was just do our job and um, to really, really just um, lock in together and uh, use our family acronym. Well, good luck against Georgia, Jalen. As always, we appreciate the time, man. Great talking with you. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. All right, buddy. You too. Take care. Jalen Milrow with us, the Alabama quarterback presented by Crane Works, Rental Works, and Waste Works. The big guy says rent from the big dog. Crane Works, Rental Works, and Waste Works. He is with us on the johnstonrvcenter.com hotline.